Rename. Rename. Rainbow down. Uh, how long can our name be? I don't know. Can see. <laughs> Hold on. Put T T T. <laughs> oh well, it looks like we are officially live. Wow! Great. So exciting. <laughs> Welcome, world. Hello, hello. I have a few folks tuning in, but we can just wait another minute before getting started. Great. Thanks so much to everybody who's able to make it here today and those who are tuning in later after the fact. Um, we're really excited to have a really fun discussion tonight. So. <laughs> Go Rainbow Dome. Go Rainbow Go Dome. Go Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Rainbow Dome. <laughs> To y'all have some like laser rings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started then since it's just a, a few minutes after. I'm just going to give a short little intro and then I will hop off and just let uh, Justin, and Frankie, and Theron take over from there. Um, my name is Emma Perez Stoyer, I'm the executive director of Union Hall. We're a nonprofit arts exhibition space in the Denver area, and we work on supporting emerging artists and creatives, and also host a wide range of interdisciplinary events in our space, including performances, uh, concerts, yoga. Um, and a big part of our mission is wanting to bring different types of creatives together in different uh, artistic disciplines and have a little bit more of that integration in the cultural community of Denver. And so, um, you know, within our space that's having performances with the visual art as a backdrop. And um, we, throughout COVID, we're just thinking about, you know, how we can extend that uh, to an online platform and being able to uh, also bring creatives together for really interesting discussions and uh, talk about their own practices, their own journeys, and uh, what ties them to the community of Denver. So uh, we created Reunion, a uh, little punny uh, name for our new monthly program, uh, which is focused on building community across uh, the different creative fields in Denver. And we bring together two, or in this case, three uh, creatives from different industries, disciplines or mediums, and try and create a platform for a really interesting discussion. So no pressure. <laughs> um, and yeah, before I hand it off, I'll just do the uh, thank you to our really generous sponsors who are supporting all of our programming throughout 2021. Uh, and that's the Colorado Community Foundation, as well as the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts. We're really appreciative for their support to make events like this possible. And uh, yeah, I'll hand it off now to uh, Justin and Theron and Frankie, thank you all so much for being here, and I'm really excited for this discussion. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for having us. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Emma, um, and thank you, Union Hall, for having us. Um, we are so excited to be here. This is going to be so much fun. Um, my name is Justin Stucy. Um, I'm a relatively new Denverite. I've been here for about three years, um, about three and a half years or so. Um, so. Uh, since moving here to Denver, the, the arts community has just been so welcoming to me. Uh, I moved here from New Jersey, uh, by way of New Jersey, originally from Houston, Texas. And um, people like Pat Milbury, Ari Myers, Johnny DeFeo, just um, Theron um, and Frankie, just so many wonderful artists have uh, just really shown me a lot of love. And I'm so grateful uh, to this community uh, for welcoming me. And thank you for this opportunity to do this. Um, Theron and Frankie, good to see y'all again. You too. Good to see you, <laughs> as always. And congratulations on your recent accomplishment with Meow Wolf. Um, Thank you. Maybe let's let's do like just some light introductions um, mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of maybe tell us uh, where you're from originally um, and then a little bit about how we met uh, through Meow Wolf. Okay, well, I'm not really from anywhere. I grew up in a military family. <laughs> um, but we landed in Colorado Springs when I was 12. And then I moved to Denver in 2006. So I guess I'm from 
Colorado <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so I did my high school and everything there. Uh, but I do have a bunch of family in southwestern Colorado. So I spent some time every year out visiting family on the western slope. So I had some long time connections to Colorado, but went through the Midwest and then the South to move out here. So I've kind of done the East Coast thing and now I'm out in the West. Amazing. Yeah. And we met to follow your, you know, the next part of the question. Oh, yeah. We met you, Justin, um, while doing installations at Meow Wolf. Um, yes. Both Theron and I had different installations going on, um, but on the same floor in Meow Wolf. So it was so nice. We could check in and yes. support each other. Yeah. And you were our guiding light through yes, it. Yes. You were such Aww. a support. Yeah. <laughs> and also a joy. Yes. Aww. There's a little picture, y'all. Oh. Remember this? I'm wearing the same overalls. Oh my god, <laughs> that's great. Good luck overalls. That's great. Yes. Amazing memories. What an adventure. Oh. <laughs> what a time. Yeah, I can. I just got a, a visceral memory of hard hat. The hard hat feeling on my head. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so it fun. Was quite quite an experience. Um, you know, it, yeah. So let me let me think here. Um, yeah, it, it was interesting. I I when I started, just to kind of quickly kind of touch on it. Um, when it, when I first started there, um, I did not know any of of the collaborating artists, and um, you two in particular. I remember when I first first met y'all, and your energy was just always just so much love and light, um, and uh, so it's just really beautiful to kind of that that we find ourselves like full circle you know, here at this place um, to kind of get to know each other a little a little more outside of work. Um, so I, I moved to Denver. I'm not sure if y'all know this, but um, yeah, I moved to Denver about three and a half years ago uh, with my partner, Caleb, who's a musician and a singer. <clears throat> and uh, I worked at the Denver Zoo um, for about two years and um, did things like Zoo Lights and uh, True Color Safari. And so like, you know, my, my journey as, as an artist has been very interesting. My, my background is in um, producing production management uh, and creative, creative direction, um, but not traditional fine art um, or DIY art. Uh, so it's, it's been a bit of a journey for me. And um, coming into the space with, with all of you all was just so enlightening for me because uh, you all, you're all such interesting individuals and you've all come from such interesting backgrounds that you bring your experience uh, to to your to your work, um, I'm curious. So, like, like, what are what are some of your creative inspirations? Like, I, I know what you've done there, and Frankie, let me let me see your fingers, Frankie. Uh, what you... <laughs> <laughs> I want to know all about the fingers. Spooky season. <laughs> spooky season. Finger extensions. It's everything that is uh, near and dear to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Only the best ho holiday those, of those the year. Those are supposed to be a little bit of a of a of a secret. Thanks, yes. Justin. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Yeah. Casual. Yeah. Well, and that is that. This That's is a good a segue, good segue mm -hmm. into our inspirations. And you know, I think there's so many ways to answer the question of what our our artistic inspirations. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, there's many, many artists and legacies of artists that really inspire me. But I will say just um, based on the work that I think most people um, connect to me right now, I work mostly in soft sculpture. I do a lot of work that's about the body, fingers, hands. I started using fingers and hands as a symbol of touch and connection and interaction. A lot of my work, um, the concepts are a lot about community building and about relationship formation and and about the relationship between a person and their body um, so a lot of my work is also on this sort of line of the horror of the body and uh, thinking about what it means to, to move through the world as a person with a body and as a marginalized body and sort of the tensions that come up in, uh, 
through that, just through life and through that lived process. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly my most recent background in my work. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think a lot of my work is about um, like developing a, like a personal iconography. I use a lot of the same symbols and like, I think the, the continuous narrative through most of my work is like the process of transformation and, you know, how we as people in our bodies change within and without throughout our lives and just a constant changing form. So I focus on a lot of like simplified imagery um, like eyes, hands, stars, things that are easily recognizable and that I think everyone can relate to in some way. Um, but, and I think everyone is figuring themselves out. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's so fascinating to hear. Um, I, I did not know that or about, about either of you. Um, right. And it's it actually, <laughs> actually kind of makes a lot of sense um you know in in some ways uh my my own the, my own sort of the thing that sort of inspires me is you know exploring ways to connect people to find to create new connections personalized connections um you know celebrating individuality and using individuality as that universal thing that connects us all we're all unique um and so i i love this idea of you know um touch in the body and, and iconography that uh, really kind of pulls focus to um, some of the, some of those details of, of just really finding ourselves and understanding ourselves in, in a different way. Um, so I, I see behind you, you're in like a lime green room with an orange couch and um, <laughs> it looks like there's a rainbow on the back wall there. This um, is our office. <laughs> Welcome to Rainbow Dome. This is Rainbow Dome. <laughs> what is Rainbow Dome? For those of us, for those who do not know what Rainbow Dome yeah. is. Yeah. What is Rainbow Dome? <laughs> Rainbow Dome is a collaborative project that yeah. we have been cooking up for some time. Oh, there's oh, one of our stickers, <laughs> some of our work. Um, so Theron and I have been friends for, for five, six years. Something like pretty much very shortly after I moved to Denver, yeah. we met and became mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. and started working together um, through the Secret Love Collective. Right. And then in 2018, we really were talking about what what could we build together? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our artwork is very complementary in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Um, we really enjoy working together. And so we were thinking of what kind of endeavor could we start together right and um through many series of conversations we knew we wanted it to be art focused mm -hmm. but then paired with a social or community aspect mm -hmm. um and and we were really wondering like what that would be and somebody mentioned roller skating and we were like that's it like a, a roller skating <laughs> ring paired with art and why not yeah and yeah and i think it really captivated us because it, um, you know, there's not a lot of art rules when it comes to a roller skating rink. Okay. So it's sort of whatever we want goes, mm -hmm. but also it's, again, it's activity based. So there's, um, I, I find socializing to be very enjoyable when there's also an activity involved. Mm -hmm. It takes sort of the pressure off of the, you know, the conversation or just the, the focus on the other person and mm -hmm. pulls you back into your body and mm -hmm. into um, the space that you're in. Mm -hmm. And also it gives us the opportunity to, to do many different types of events and offer, you know, sober socializing space and all of these things that um, are connecting within our community mm -hmm. and this space that we think is necessary. Right. And it doesn't exist yet. Right. So we get to build it from scratch mm -hmm. and make it how we want, mm -hmm. which is wild. <laughs> it's <was> very fun. <laughs> cool. there's, a, there's a lot of uh, new creation that, that y'all have going on here. And I'm just going to show one of them here. This is an interesting <laughs> creation. Tough guy. I saw this <laughs> Who is this? It's tough guy. <laughs> um, tough guy helps us clean our floors. So cute. Um, that's yeah. about it. <laughs> 
Shout out, shout out to Tough Guy. Great. Thank you. <laughs> yep. oh, oh my goodness. You know, a, uh, it was, uh, I think, what was it, two weeks ago now that, that yeah. you had, had had a preview event of your of the studio space? That, that yeah, our in. little open house. Yeah, can, can you tell us, tell us a little bit about that and, you know, sure. what was that? Well, we wanted to give people a little, like, sneak peek at our warehouse slash fabrication space. Um, you can't see it, but it's on the other side of that wall. Um and you know we we haven't been able to do a big skating event before then and we really wanted to invite the community into our space and just you know interact with each other a little bit and um you know have them see what we're working on yeah yeah and you know after a year plus of covid and um you know getting together in all kinds of ways, but mm -hmm. specifically around the arts, I think has been challenging. Yeah. Um, so that was a way for us to sort of reignite, to re-engage with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We did a large art sale of our own individual work, um, which was great because yeah. we all need a new beginning and it was really nice to get a lot of it out mm -hmm. the door. And we were um, very, pleasantly overwhelmed by the amount of people who came through and the excitement that's building around the project mm -hmm. yeah it's been really nice it's yeah it's been lovely <laughs> so thank you everyone yes. for being very excited <laughs> yes thank you um, well y'all are definitely uh beloved and it was it was evident by um the people that i saw there um how they were engaging with you all and, and engaging with the art um you know this this uh, collective creation process journey that, that we've been on uh, together, the three of us, of course, with what we've just done, but now this, this journey that you're on together um, with, with Rainbow Dome, um, you know, you're, you both were kind of talking about uh, how your, your inspirations sort of uh, drive your creative work. Um, I'm curious, um, I'm looking at my notes here, I'm trying to be smooth with it. Ah! Um, <laughs> You we didn't smooth. notice. We didn't notice. <laughs> you see my eyes go like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm cu I'm curious, like like what are some what are some things that are have sort of like come about as far as this collective creation process of Rainbow Dome? Like what are some sort of new discoveries in the synergies that that are happening between you two, between the collaborators that you're bringing on, your interns, these sorts of things? What are some of the things you're you're kind of finding? Well, it's still very early days. <laughs> we would like to foster all kinds of wild new relationships with people in our community that we know and mm -hmm. that we haven't met yet. Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> it is. I mean, I think the the, the one of the biggest things that's, I think, on my mind and I'm gonna assume on your mind Theron as we're we're about to have our first pop-up which is really exciting where we'll have skates we'll have art we'll have music we'll have the whole shebang basically um it's called welcome to rainbow dome it's on october 9th in centennial center park you can rsvp on our website there's more details but um but as we move towards that you know something that's really on our mind is we are starting this thing that's a lot bigger than us. And so trying to uh, fill all the roles that are needed is challenging, of yes. course. We can't do everything. But we are trying <laughs> to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that I'm grateful for every day is the working relationship that we mm -hmm. have, because I think we both often are feeling the same way um, mm -hmm. and we both can chime in with creative solutions mm -hmm. um, in different times and that was actually one of the things that I was most looking forward to transitioning to working primarily on Rainbow Dome. Yeah. Before this I was a independent artist in my studio which I also loved but it, there were these times where it got really exhausting to have to make every decision and be responsible for everything. Um, and now at least we can share that two burden. of us. <laughs> and I do, I think that that, um, it really does feed me and it also mm -hmm. allows me to think 
bigger than myself and bigger than us mm -hmm. and and to really dream about those future relationships that we hope to make with many more artists mm -hmm. and not just artists also like project managers and, and other <laughs> things like that engineers yes right uh people in the skate community totally absolutely mm -hmm. yeah 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 it, it definitely it definitely takes a lot of different talents and abilities in order to um, pull off these interactive, um, immersive spaces. Um, now, now you all mentioned that um, you know this 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 thing that you're creating is is bigger than than you two. Um, what do you what do you hope that will come as a result of creating Rainbow Dome? Gosh, fun. Yeah, ultimate fun. <laughs> Many fun memories. And I mean, when we were looking for ideas on what to create with rainbow dome we a lot of there's so many the the queer community in denver is huge but w there aren't many just queer spaces mm -hmm. that are not that are bars not or bars clubs. and we thought it was very important to foster that kind of community space that's not just centered around alcohol and can you know be a welcoming space for queers of all ages and families and elders mm -hmm. and everyone mm -hmm. um so that's a big important part of it mm -hmm. of course we want non-queers to come but we want it to be like this is a queer space yeah. <laughs> This Absolutely. is the most important part of this. Mm -hmm. You're welcome here. Right. Um, but also like be a, an event space for the community to be able to rent uh, at an affordable rate and just people to be able to come in and create with us mm -hmm. in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think all of those things, mm -hmm. of course, at the beginning of this dream, we have a million and one ideas and hopes for it. Right, it's probably gonna be pared back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think that the goal is the same. I mean, for me, and something that's always been a guiding principle of our talks mm -hmm. is, you know, what, and, and in Secret Love, the collective that we were in before mm -hmm. this, like, what is the way that you can galvanize a social and community space around art and with art and through art? Mm -hmm. And I mean, even just thinking about this today, um, this talk and sort of, you know, like the what is Rainbow Dome, mm -hmm. I think there's there's a long history um, within queer art and queer spaces where art and socializing merge. And mm -hmm. it's not, you know, art is not just work on the wall or a sculpture or mm -hmm. something like that but it's also your outfits your mm -hmm. costumes your performance it you know it's it's a whole thing that's woven into the world mm -hmm. and i think that that's something that we want rainbow dome to be um you know a place where you can wear a weird costume on a thursday night just because you want to mm -hmm. um or you know as you know those kinds of things um we want to be that space. And the other thing is wanting to foster that within the Denver arts community. Mm -hmm. um, we just want always to embrace the weirdness that's out there and encourage it and, and uh, you know, uh, keep it here. You know, we want people- Help to, it grow. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. We want people to love Denver. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, Theron, I, I, I remember you and I had had some chats uh, in, in the in the van, the van. Uh, many times just about like the old school days. Um, my, my best friend back in Houston, Arthur, um, used to tell me, you know, uh, as a queer kid, you know, his before he could go, you know, get into bars and clubs, you know, where would you go? You went to the bookstore, you went to the coffee shops and, mm -hmm. you know, these became like these havens for for queer kids to um you know, to be seen, to be heard, to connect with other people. So I think it's really, really wonderful that that you all are, are reimagining, re you know, what that can look like um, for for the community, as well as keeping it as, as well as making it a space for people to um, live within the truth of who they are, within their own uh, personal identity, however they, uh, they, they want to present that or, or choose to present that. 
Um, I think what's, what's really interesting though, but to just kind of connect to that and a little bit of a personal thing, um, you kind of, you, you hear artists a lot of times talking about, you know, finding your voice, right? Um, you know, I just turned 40 this year. And for me, yes, the big 40. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to color my hair to keep all the gray out. But um, embrace the gray. Embrace the gray, right? <laughs> Good word. Um, but you know, for me, it it definitely it definitely has been a journey, you know, just trying to find my creative voice. When I was at the at the zoo and um we we did the first our first ever, you know, um LGBTQ plus event for Pride. Um, you know, it, it was a very scary thing for me because I was like, you know, who, who am I to, to try to, you know, do this on, you know, uh, to present this to a community that I just moved into that I know very little about or, right. you know, so um, and what is my voice in this community? You know, what is my voice through this medium to these people? All these questions were things that sort of, you know, racked in my, in my brain. Um, and I, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious, like, um, like what, is, what are some of your experiences in, in finding your, your voice? Frankie, I know you mentioned that, that your, your focus at this time is really on uh, parts of the body and um, like, like what, is your, what has your journey been like as far as finding your voice through that medium? And Darren, I'd, I'd pass that same sort of question to you if you would like to answer. And at the end of it, I want to pass it back to you because I'm yeah, we want to know the same about that. <laughs> um, totally. <sighs> the journey of finding your voice. I mean, I think, I think it's a continual journey. Um, it is. I think that yes, there are definitely moments of questioning that and and doubting you know what is what is my place in this what is my what is the impact of what I'm saying or trying to express through art and does it matter and is it helpful and you know all of those things and and I I have to say that those thoughts um I try to not necessarily listen to them a whole lot because I don't know that they're necessarily helpful. And there's so many reasons that you can, that I can come up with to delay or not make something um, that instead I really do focus on the reasons to make something and that I want to make something. And, and also, you know, again, so much of my work um, is about those connections and relationships and trying to meet other people and um, present you know, I think there's something vulnerable about being an artist. You're putting yourself out there and you're making public statements in some way. But I I have found so many lovely friends through that process. And that's, for me, what it is really about is the joy of trying to to do something together in the world because it's very hard to do things together and it's very hard to make things happen um, in the world, especially the bigger and bigger your ideas get. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, the, I guess if I think about finding my voice, I mean, yes, there's a whole material vocabulary that I have and skill set and the training that I have. But for me, it really is again about trying to, I guess, affect the world in a positive way, mostly for myself, but also with this thought in my brain that's like, if I want this one thing to change or this thing to be different, there's a ton of other people that also want that. Um, and so remembering that you, you know, you can find your people through doing this. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. Like I said before, my art has been a, like a, about our personal evolutions and how we are personally transforming throughout our lives. And I think that's kind of a story about my work too and how it has changed so much. And I have like <laughs> realized through my work like more things about myself. Um, I think I started doing work revolving around like time travel and self-transformation and um, just change probably like seven, eight years ago now. But 
the more I did it, the more I realized more things about myself. Like I came out as queer when I was 30. (laughs) After doing all of this art and just like sitting with it and thinking about it. And suddenly I was like, oh, (laughs) that's what this has been about. Um, So I think for me, it's been helpful to like figure out what my journey is and where I'm going. Um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. (laughs) So, and, and I think it's, it's been good because a lot of folks have said that they see the same things within themselves that I see in my work. And that's just so validating. Um, so I think to be as out there and visible as possible helps more people than you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Justin, I want I want to know from this production side and the creative mm-hmm. direction side, and also you know if if there are other you know sort of mediums that you're working with, like how have you found your artistic voice mm-hmm. through your process? Yeah, um, you know. Um, it, the, at the at the core of at the core of all of it, it's it's uh, it's that I have I, fundamentally I've I've I felt that I was not equipped, that I was not good enough, that I didn't belong um, at the foundation, and so in choosing to follow this as a career and as a, as a part of my life, um, I've decided I've identified that that's a fact of something that has that is with that has been a part of me. Um, to counter that through confronting th- those fears. Um, and through doing that, um, the way that I, I do it is that I explore every possible medium of producing that I can. I've, I've produced an animated short, I've produced a short film, a short film, um, you know, 24 projects at, at Meow Wolf with, with Giselle, Matthew and Annie, um, you know, Denver Zoo. Um, everything has been completely different. All of it has been extremely challenging, way harder than if I, if I ever had any idea of how hard it would be, I probably would have never did it. But in some ways, and Theron, this really kind of connects to what you were saying, in some ways it, it's become like my therapy um, for, well, for me in that, um, you know, I, I proved to myself that I am worthy, that I, I am capable of expressing that I am capable, moreover, of communicating, of having a conversation with people with my work um, and growing from that and continuing to grow as an individual and growing within the community. Um, so finding, finding my voices, um, in some ways, it's become less frightening with, within me, um, but it, it certainly is still scary as I step into the next thing because the next thing is always something that I feel like I'm not equipped to do. Um, although we have everything within us uh, in order to be successful. Um, I, I genuinely believe that certainly um, within the, the power of our imagination and, and, the, and, and, our, and our abilities and having breath in our body. So, you know, finding, finding your voice is the journey. You're, you're right, Frankie. It, it's, it's something that, that will never cease until we cease. Um, and I think that's a big part of what it is to be an artist. And it has taken me many, many years to even call myself an artist or to really even understand what that means for, for myself. Um, and being around people like y'all really helps to validate that and having these sorts of conversations where, um, you know, there might be somebody, you know, watching who's like, you know, I'm just doing something in, in my house and my little sketch thing. And, you know, I'm, you know, it's like, you know, just keep going. Like you, you're, you're very much a part of this community and this thing that we are creating that is community yeah. um, and, and finding your voice uh, through that. Mm-hmm. Um, so just to like, like jump over to uh, back to immersive experiences, you know, we just opened up this, this big mamma jamma. Um, <laughs> You know, immersive art experiences. I'm curious, just as a phrase, Rainbow Dome is an immersive, will be an immersive art experience, the, the roller skating um, uh, uh, experience. What is what does immersive art experience mean to you all? Like what, you know, it's being thrown around a lot. And, you know, I'm just curious, how does that sort of land on your ear? Well, we're actually trying to move away from the term immersive, mm. <laughs> just because it's used so much. 
Well, and in Denver right now, I think that immersive is synonymous for better or worse with Meow Wolf. Yeah. Um, especially right now in the, the opening and mm-hmm. all of that. And I think that the idea of immersive art, the you know, it's a constantly evolving definition. And I I certainly do not feel best equipped to answer the question of what is immersive art. But we definitely do talk about it a lot because Mm -hmm. if we tell someone this is an immersive art and roller skating experience, what is the expectation that comes with that? Mm -hmm. And so we tend to use the word experiential art more, but, you know, so a huge influence of mine and of ours and um, projects that I've done in the past is a project called Killjoy's Castle, the lesbian feminist haunted house. Mm -hmm. And it is a production by many artists, but specifically Alison Mitchell and Deirdre Logue. And they're Canadian artists and they've put on this immersive um, haunted house, you know, very DIY, very campy haunted house in several places throughout North America at this point. And when there's a book about their process. It's called Inside Killjoy's Castle. And something that I really um, was caught off guard when I was reading it was they have these, you know, because when you say immersive, I think a certain things come to mind, you know, the idea is a whole environment, you're immersed within a, a visual space or a performance space or a storyline or something. But they really used in their in the writers who wrote about their process, they used these long descriptive sentences that never once included the word immersive. Instead, it would be something like, the visitor will go into a space where there is something resembling community theater and a DIY, you know, punk show with these performers and, you know, handmade objects. And so really to us, I think it is more helpful to use more descriptors, Mm -hmm. such as there will be soft sculpture at Rainbow Dome, Mm -hmm. there will be wood cutouts, there will be standalone sculptures that you will Mm -hmm. skate in and around and throughout. There will be art on the skate floor with you. There will be art around you, you know. An adventure skate track. Right, exactly. Like Mm -hmm. those more descriptive Mm -hmm. words actually. Give you more information than just immersive. And they set us apart too, because Mm -hmm. we can then return to this language of camp or of performance Mm -hmm. or of drag or of the haunted house or Mm -hmm. those kinds of things that um, also help categorize people's not just their expectations but you know um, their own inner vision of what of who this is for and how they're supposed to interact with it that's the other thing about immersive I think a lot of times it it is also something that means so interactive that it is meant to be kind of destroyed and there's something about you know like a haunted house where it's almost a um a collective fantasy and you're not trying to bring the house down you're trying to enjoy it and escape from it and so I think that that is you know we're sort of going towards that kind of language Mm -hmm. interesting what do you think immersive art is right now well, you know, um, that's that's a great question to throw back at me. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I think a, I think a lot of, and this is these are my own thoughts, y'all. Don't throw any shade at me in the in the comment section. Um, <laughs> you know, immersive starts in the mind, um, and I think a lot of times, I think a lot of times people they they're too quick to hard categorize things and hard label things and what is and and what what isn't. Um, and, and so for me, it's less about, uh, it's less about the physical and it's more about the mental. Um, so I, I really sort of align with, with your mindset, uh, the strategic approach of, of really sort of identifying or calling out, you know, this is what this experience is. And, um, me as a, as a participant, see, you know, looking at that and saying, Hey, okay. I connect with that. I'm interested in that. I'm intrigued by that. I want to experience that as opposed to this ambiguous word called immersive um, that really is more uh, psychological than, um, than tactile. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and specifically, you know, what's, what's interesting about, about Denver is uh, 
this killer like DIY arts community. Um, like there's just so, I've just found that there's like so many people here that just create things. Um, you know, I, I recently went to a Shiki Dreams um, uh, over by City, City, City Park. Um, and just was just blown away just by by just the level of, of, of artistry and work that, that's happening just there, that's happening all over the cities, the, the mural. Um, I'm curious from, from y'all's perspective, um, you know, with, uh, you know, it, it can be very challenging to produce in, in Denver, you know, finding space, you know, insurance can be expensive. Um, and, you know, just to kind of push the conversation a little further, um, you know, I'm curious, like, what, what would you say is like the true value, the, the thing that you can touch or that you can feel the value of the DIY artists that are, that are in, in the arts community? What, what, do, what do they bring to Denver? Well, I think um, uh, I th I'm going to reframe that statement just a little bit and say not only what do they bring to Denver, but how have they created Denver in a lot of ways and how, how are we here now because of the long legacy of DIY art that mm -hmm. exists in and has always existed in Denver? Um, there, were, there was so much happening 10 years ago that is not happening now, but paved the way for what, what is happening all over the city. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know if you know about the ghost ship fire, Justin, mm -hmm. in, it was in Oakland mm -hmm. a few years ago, but it was a DIY space that there was a fire and there were a lot of people that died. But because of that event and how like unsafe that space was, um, a lot of DIY spaces were shut down elsewhere. Throughout the country. Mm. And a lot of spaces in Denver, um, including Rhinoceropolis, which was on, it's still there on Brighton Boulevard. Um, it's near where the source is. Um, but I mean, that used to be such a hot spot for live shows and weird art and, you know, all kinds of DIY magical experiences. Tit Wrench did a lot of things there. Um, I, I can't even list the amount of mm -hmm. events that happened there. Um, but places like that really paved the way for us and for everything else happening. I mean, that space being there is why like that whole strip is developed now mm -hmm. so I have lots of feelings about that right. <laughs> yeah I mean it brings it certainly brings up the tension between mm -hmm. artists mm -hmm. and development and gentrification and yeah. and the scarcity of space mm -hmm. or the seeming scarcity of space the unaffordability of mm -hmm. space I think that um, I mean, obviously we're in the arts, we really value art and we do believe that art just brings so much vibrancy to a city. And, mm -hmm. and like you were saying at the beginning of this talk, Justin, Denver, in my experience as well, the arts community is extremely, like extraordinarily welcoming mm -hmm. um, compared to other cities that I've lived in. And I find that people really they're just, they're excited. They're excited to see new things happen and new things develop. And so and I- New things to participate in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, mm -hmm. there's a huge collaborative spirit mm -hmm. here. Um, and so I think to me, when I think of that question of like, what is the value mm -hmm. um, of the DIY community in Denver? I, I think that like, we're looking at it in a lot of ways. I think that that community has made Denver what it is. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, it's for better and for worse, of course, in, in all ways. Um, but I think that the Denver arts community is, is very unique. And my hope is that it continues to be unique because Denver is also, it's landlocked. It's unlike the East Coast where there's so much traffic going up and down and you know you, your proximity to cities, you can really jump around art scenes pretty easily. Mm -hmm. You know, here closest major art cities are 
California, Chicago, Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, They're not, I remember when I moved here, I had a show in Oregon. I was like, oh, I'll just drive over for the opening. (laughs) And I looked at the map and it was 14 hours away. (laughs) And I felt very naive because coming from the South where, you know, it was seven hours was a long drive, you know? (laughs) Um, So I think, yes, I, Mm -hmm. I guess there's so much intrinsic value in the city that the DIY community has brought to it. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible answer. Um, And it's, it's worth saving. It's worth protecting. It's worth celebrating. And it's also worth knowing. And thank you so much for um, uh, sharing that with me. uh, And I will just say there's, there are people in Denver who know, way more so much more about the history and legacy of diy denver than yes. either of us do i have a terrible memory but yeah. also <laughs> i don't know a lot <laughs> yeah. and so there there are amazing you know resources out there such as like brie davies of city mm-hmm. cast and mm-hmm. and many many members of rhinoceropolis and mm-hmm. such beautiful beautiful well, I think it is time for us to take a couple of questions from. Um, uh, Doesn't from look like there are any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, back to us. <laughs> yeah, back to us. <laughs> yes. You know, Justin, I have a question for you. <laughs> sure. I want to know about, um, as we've talked so much about like community formation and the importance of. Um, community within finding your voice. I'm curious to know if you see, how, how do you navigate um, different communities? And do you see that as part of what you do in your artistic work as a producer or creative director? Yeah, um, like connecting with different communities, reaching out, uh, creating with, that, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I think it goes back to the whole sort of like fear, not knowing thing is the foundation, right? So um, w- once, you, once you hear something, you know, and you know better. Um, and so much of my, my time here has just been about learning who is here and who does what and where they're at. And um, uh, I actually have this thing. I, w- I was actually just uh, talking with with a friend of mine earlier today. This concept. I'm going to put it out there because I, I I'm I'm excited about it. Um, it's this idea that anything that I do moving forward, I want to um, have a performance piece that focuses on the operational aspects of the event, the performance aspects of the event, all done with individuals who um, have special and unique talents. And with that special and unique talents, it's going to the autistic community, it's going to disabled veterans, it's going to plus size individuals, and it's continuing to find any other niche or marginalized community that I can hear about and to find those individuals with those specialized talents and those artistic abilities to to bring them forward and to push them out front and and to celebrate them. Um, Mm -hmm. For me, you know, my, my creative work is about finding and cultivating talent and uh, putting that talent out front and showing how amazing their, their work is. Um, so w- one thing that I do find, find challenging here is sometimes getting to those communities. And just to be very transparent with you, like I, I live in um, uh, Cap Hill, um, you know, it, it can be hard for me. Like I, I don't have a car, I'm a little scooter. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's been COVID, so that's also been kind of hard, but I, I do realize that, that there are a lot of communities here. There's a large Hispanic community here, Latinx community. There's a large uh, Mongolian community. There's all sorts of things happening in Denver. And, you know, it's my job as a producer to do the work to find who's here and to bring that talent forward. Um, so, you know, I guess to answer your question, it's it's really like, it's really bad. It's, it's wanting to um, figure out who's here and, and, and get with them. So anybody who's listening out there in TV land, if you've got a special talent, um, you know, hit me up. I'd love to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you would be so lucky to work with Justin. Yeah, Susie. Justin's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. Um, still, so we still don't have any questions? 
No. <laughs> I mean, I just, I love that. I love that answer. And it's something I think about a lot as it, I, to me, it, it that is an art form, the connecting of people mm-hmm. and the, um, just, you know, navigating all of the different art forms, but also voices and visions and, you know, and then mix that with the logistics of everything in the, in the, project management, creative direction, you know, the logistics side of producing art. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing amount of things to navigate. And I'm just in awe of people who have brains like yours. Oh, well, you know, we're we're all just, we're all here figuring it out and just, just exploring so, so much of, so much of this, this, this journey that we're on is, is just exploration. It's, it's saying yes to things that we have no idea how we're going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm faking it till we make it. Mm-hmm. Making it till you make it. Um, <laughs> we're so bad. Yes. yes. We do a lot of pretending that we know what we're doing. True. And through the pretending, you and then find we out, out that we what do it. it yeah. yeah. So then exactly. we figured it out and we did it. Exactly. It's, it's part great. of the process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call it art. <laughs> yeah i mean um i guess if, if we don't have any questions um emma or jess if, if you're if you're here you know um thank you <laughs> this is <been> awesome. <laughs> i guess i'm just here in the chat there <laughs> absolutely um, yeah what do y'all got planned think... for this evening? Hmm? What, what do y'all have planned for this evening i'm gonna take a bath yeah, my bones. <laughs> Got a little bit of Halloween decorations to work on. Yeah, I'm saving I that do. for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Oh, um, one thing: are there that in the chat? It's like, oh. are there upcoming events that mm-hmm. we that you want to plug or anything, Justin? Absolutely, Rainbow Dome, oh. Park Roller Skating, <laughs> Saturday, October 9th. I'm gonna say it again: Saturday, hey. October 9th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Plaza Centennial Center Park. Yes, <laughs> yes. Register for a spot now because tickets are going fast. Yeah, they're free tickets. Um, you can bring your own skates or inline skates. Um. Or you but can you can rent car. some from us yeah, for $4. For $4. Four bucks. Otherwise, it's oh. free. And of course, in true Frankie and Theron fashion, and because it is October, it will be a spooky, spooky. Rainbow Dome Halloween installation. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you both so much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you. This has been awesome. Ah. Thank you so much, Union Hall. Thank you, everybody who's yeah, watching. Thanks for having us. Be yeah. inspired, y'all. Mm-hmm. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate you hopping on. It was so great to hear about all your experiences, all your upcoming projects. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what you have in store. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Justin. Bye. Bye.